So today's topic will be the after the completion of the superficial fascia and the contents of the front of the thigh. We are going to deal about the next topic which is on the relation related to the thigh region that is the deep fascia. So question can be asked in the deep fascia of the thigh is it can be asked as the one which is question fascia lata. Second one iliotibial tract. Then third one which is a saphenous opening. Fourth one deep extension of the thigh. So these all are the short notes which can come for the, this exam also coming and uh, you have to get the questions like this in the final examination. So what is uh, after the completion of the superficial fascia, you come across in the superficial fascia what are the contents and uh, what are the, uh, we are going to get the golden slime. So these after studying. Then again we are going to go in the deeper section of the thigh region that is uh, after the skin superficial fascia then deeper we are going to go to the deep fascia then after the deep fascia we have the muscles more than that vessels and bones we are going to get so that here you have to remember what is the deep fascia of the thigh region total thigh we are not only front of the thigh but you have to remember about the what is the thigh region deep fascia is we call that is the fascia lata so what is fascia lata fascia lata is the that is the it is defined as it is a tough fibrous sheath it is a tough fibrous sheath which envelops the whole thigh like a sleeve whatever the words you can see here it is a tough fibrous sheath which envelops the whole thigh like a sleeve sleeve like you are going to get sleeve it covers like a tough fibrous sheath like and that is we are going to call in the deep fascia of the thigh okay whatever you have to remember the first definition of the or the what is the deep fascia of the thigh is called it is called as a fascia lata then what is the definition of the fascia lata is it is a tough fibrous sheath which envelops the whole thigh like the sleeve. So what is the attachment of the deep fascia? When you go to the deep fascia attachment, it will be the attached to the superiorly and inferior in the boundary line between the pelvis and lower leg. You have the studied the seen the pelvis, then that pelvis and boundary line of the lower leg and there it is attachment of the we are going to get the deep fascia. So what is the attachments of the deep fascia are? It is the first one which is you have to remember. This is attached which is you can see the superiorly. It is attached to the boundary line between the pelvis and the lower leg. And in that again it is attached to the anteriorly. It is attached to the we are going to get here that is the inguinal ligament. Anteriorly we are going to get the inguinal ligament. So you, uh, you have to remember. Anteriorly inguinal ligament, laterally iliac crest, then we have the posteriorly sacrum and coccyx and sacrotuberous ligament, then we are going to get medially pubic sympiasis or the pubic arch, then ischia. So pubis, pubic arch and ischia, they are the attachment of the medially. So this is the attachment of the that is the deep fascia. So I am talking about it is attached superiorly and inferior. Inferiorly in front of the and side of the knee joint it is attached. But in the superiorly it is attached to the on the superiorly boundary line between the pelvis and the lower limb. In this it is attached to the superiorly to the anteriorly it is attached to the inguinal ligament. Laterally to the iliac crest. Then we are going to get posteriorly, this is a reverse way to show you the understanding of the sacrum and coccyx. You get the sacrum, coccyx and, coccyx and sacrotuberous ligament. Then medially I have told pubis, pubic arch and ischia. So these all are the superiorly attachment of the deep fascia. Then when you go to the inferiorly, it is attached to the front and side of the knee joint. 
superior and inferior attachment will be the front and side of the knee joint it is attached. So this is the attachment of the that is the fascia lata or the deep fascia. Then next going to the other part which is we are going to get as a formation or we are going to get the thickness of the deep fascia. How we are going to when you dissect the front of the thigh region then you are going to cut the skin superficial fascia then you are going to identify that is a seat like which is a fascia you are going to get that is a deep fascia. So that you can call as a fascia lata. So how it is uh, actually attached thickness of the uh, that is a deep fascia. See when you see the thickness of the deep fascia here you have to tell the it is very thin on the medial side thin and thick on the superiorly and most thickest on the lateral. Deep fascia of the front of thigh is thin on medial, thick on superior and thickest on lateral. And thickest lateral band, the thickest lateral band 2 inches it is. It is 2 inches and that 2 inches thickest band we call as the iliotibial tract. This was the last question asked what is the iliotibial tract? You have to tell the fascia lata which is the thickest on the laterally 2 inches band like it is making and it is attached to the iliotibial tract it is called. So that it is attached to the ilium then attached to the lateral condyle of the anterior surface of the tibia that is the attachment of the iliotibial tract. So question will be asked iliotibial tract means you have to tell it is a uh, thickness of the or the thickened part of the deep fascia or fascia lata. How much it is? It is a laterally 2 inches band which is we are going to get and this is attached to the ilium to the tibia so that it is named as the iliotibial tract and this is thickness will be the you are going to get thickest on the lateral side and this uh, iliotibial tract receives the insertion of two muscles in, in the upper three fourth of the uh, iliotibial tract it receives the insertion of two muscle that is we call tensor fascia lata and gluteus maximus. So this was asked in the MCQ the iliotibial tract receives the insertion of which are the muscle. So combined with gluteus maximus and tensor fascia lata may be given two two muscles may be given. So you have to choose this as a, these two muscle gluteus maximus and tensor fascia lata. So what you are going to write iliotibial tract? It is the lateral thick part of the uh, fascia lata and this I have told the fascia lata. Lata means extensive. This extensive which is I have told lata is a word when I have told the study of the uh, that is the fascia lata, tensor fascia lata and all. So this is the one which is you have to write thickness of the deep fascia. In, under the heads of the thickness of the deep fascia you have to write this is the thick band 2 inches laterally and which is attached from the ilium to the tibia anterior surface of the lateral condyle of the tibia and uh, this band which is uh, receives the upper 3 4 2 muscle insertion insertion that is the gluteus maximus and tensor fascia lata. So this will be supporting for the uh, knee joint. Iliotibial tract is supporting the uh, that is a uh, knee joint. And uh, what is the other function? This is the one which is an anti-gravity force to support the knee joint. This iliotibial tract is an anti-gravity force to support the knee joint. So that is all about the what right in the iliotibial tract. In this, you have to explain the two modifications. One question, where we come across the word saphenous? Saphenous vein. Okay. So you have to remember, great saphenous vein opens into the saphenous opening. So this is something relating to the deep fascia of the front of the thigh. So you have to uh, study the now modifications of the deep fascia. So whatever thickness of the deep fascia we are calling on the lateral side iliotibial tract and what are the other modifications in the scene in the deep fascia. One saphenous opening, tripliform fascia, third one is the iliotibial tract. So that what is saphenous opening? 
we found this is also as a fossa ovalis. Saphenous opening is also called as a fossa ovalis. This fossa ovalis you have to remember here also. And this is also the structure in the internal structure of the right atrium. In the right atrium, interior structure also we have the one uh, structure which is we, we are going to name that is a fossa ovalis. Means two different sides you have to remember the fossa ovalis. So in this fossa ovalis is also called as in a saphenous opening. You commonly you understood the what is a saphenous opening. Red saphenous vein opens into the femoral vein and that opening which is across the deep fascia and that is we are going to call as a saphenous opening. So this saphenous opening is a oval gap in the fascia lata and it is situated 4 cm below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. So you have to remember this is a uh, pubic tubercle you have come across and this 4 cm below and lateral to the pubic tubercle and that is we are going to call as a saphenous opening and size will be the 3 into 1.5 cm size and uh, it is formed between the superficial and deep uh, layer of the deep fascia. So what is saphenous opening means? It is called as fossa ovalis. It is a, a modified covering of the that is a saphenous opening. It is a modified part which covers the saphenous opening and that oval gap in the we are going to get in the deep fascia. So that is about situated where 4 cm we are going to get below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. And measurement will be the 3 into 1.5 cm. And this is the uh, saphenous opening. This is a gap between the superficial and deep layer of the deep fascia. So anytime a saphenous opening is asked, you should be able to write fossa ovalis. And it is a part of which is covers the modified part of the deep fascia covering the saphenous opening. And in this, it is situation you want to tell. Second one, which is we are going to get the, that is a, a cribriform fascia. This is a modified part also, because we are studying the modification only. So what are the changes we are going to get? This is a modified part of the cribriform fascia. I have told the great saphenous vein pierce the cribriform fascia and opens into the saphenous opening. So this cribriform fascia is modified part of the deep fascia which covering the saphenous opening. Whatever the great saphenous vein opens into the femoral vein before that and that opening is covered by the fascia lata and that is we call it in a cribriform fascia. So you have to understand saphenous opening, what it is. This is the opening or gap in the deep fascia that you have to remember and what is the oval gap it is. And it is measuring, you have to tell uh, where it is situated, 4 cm below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. Size will be the 3 into 1.5 cm. Then we are going to get it is between the superficial and deep layer of the deep fascia. And cribriform fascia, this is one simple one. This is a modified part of the deep fascia which covers the saphenous opening. This saphenous opening wall gap is covered by the one fascia. And that is a modified part of the deep fascia which is covers the saphenous opening. That we call as a cribriform fascia. Third modification you have to add here, iliotibial trap. That is I have told. So this is all about the, you are going to get in the, that is a, what is a, uh, fascia, lata, deep fascia of the thigh, then I have told the next is definition of the fascia lata, attachment of the fascia lata, superior, inferior, superiorly what are the attachment, then modifications of the uh, fascia lata, that is uh, we get the saphenous opening, cribriform fascia and iliotibial tract, these all are the modifications. Then I have told the detail about the iliotibial tract. Then next comes about when we go more deeper after the uh, dissection of the skin, superficial fascia and deep fascia. Then when we go to the deeper aspect of the thigh region, we are going to get as the thigh is having the three compartments. It is having the anterior compartment, medial and posterior compartment. There is no lateral compartment. Laterally we have the iliotibial tract. So that here you have to remember the three 
anterior posterior intermuscular septum divide the thigh into a three compartments remember this is the one which is a medial intermuscular septum this is one which is we get the lateral intermuscular septum and this is a posterior intermuscular septum <coughs> so three intermuscular septum listen what is the word i am using three intermuscular intermuscular means in between the two muscles there is an a partition so intermuscular septum three intermuscular septum divides the thigh into the three compartment so one is anterior compartment posterior compartment medial compartment so you are going to get anterior posterior and medial compartment we are going to get this medial intermuscular septum separates the anterior compartment from the medial compartment and this we are going to get lateral intermuscular compartment that is septum separates the anterior to the posterior compartment then we are going to get posterior intermuscular septum separates the medial to the posterior compartment so what is the deep extension of the thigh region the three intermuscular septa divides into a three compartments of the thigh we are going to get front of thigh then back of thigh then medial compartment we are going to get the medial so here we are going to get the vastus group quadriceps femoris group of muscle posterior compartment we have the hamstring muscle medial compartment we have the adductor group of muscle including gracilis adductor longus brevis magnus the medial anteriorly vastus medialis lateralis intermuscular that is the intermedius and rectus femoris all major muscle posteriorly we have the hamstring muscle those are the semitendinous semimembranous adductor magnus ischial head and biceps femoris so these all are the compartments are important because we have the separate structure in the anterior compartment posterior compartment medial compartment posterior compartment or the posterior part of the thigh we are going to get the hamstring muscle that is a very important so how you are going to explain the deep extension of the thigh it is explained by the three intermuscular septum when this is femur when we go more deeper cut section transversely this is femur we take the section in the deeper we see the three intermuscular septum medial then lateral and posterior three intermuscular septum divides the thigh into the three compartments so one which is we are going to medial intermuscular septum which is separating from anterior to the medial then posterior separating anterior to the posterior and posterior intermuscular septum separates the medial from the posterior so this is all about the deep extension of the uh, deep fascia or the thigh region so this is in this we have come across the almost all the part which is uh, you know study in this uh, first one we have studied the deep fascia attachments and all so in this we have to study and diagram of this attachment of facial attachment practice then attachment of the uh, iliotibial tract and most important insertion of gluteus maximus and tensor facial area so this is the iliac crest the outer lip of the iliac crest is giving attachment to the tensor fascia lata fascia lata all you are knowing that lata comes means it is a deep fascia so that is a deep extension we are going to get extension that is a lata word which we have to remember and uh, when question may be asked as the fascia lata or question may be asked like a question that is a deep fascia of the so this is the one which is you all remember so today we have covered the what is the definition of the fascia lata and the iliotibial tract and deep extension and modifications of the that is a deep fascia so this is all about the deep fascia of the front of the thigh or the thigh region